Hello there. So I thought I'd uh, give you a little bit of an update on what I've been playing around with. Um, this is a form box from a company called Meiku and what it is is a vacuum former and it takes a sheet of plastic, heats it up with this toaster element thing underneath it and then this platen essentially pulls down, it's obviously easier to work with two hands, but it pulls down nicely over these moulds and what that does is gives you something like this. So you can fill this up with plaster of Paris, chocolate, whatever it is that you want to take uh, duplicates of. It's usually very cost effective uh, for repetitions and you get quite a few moulds out of it. However, as you can imagine, um, I'm not here to basically tell you how to use this. Loads of those videos uh, uh, exist online. My shtick is always trying to see what other things that I could do that are a bit different. So, I kind of ended up on this journey of what would it be like if I took a standard uh, milk bottle like this, which is made of HDP, and could I possibly get a reasonable quality back form out of it? And in case you're wondering why bother doing this, well, quite simply, don't know about you, as much as I recycle these, uh, I'm aware there's good quality plastic in here, and it kind of just sort of begs the question of do you need to use virgin completely 100% material for something which is a bit of a knockabout or a test, or is it reasonable to save this, do the mold, and then indeed you can still put the mold in the recycling bin and it's all good. So I kind of thought that was super interesting. And I'll show you how I get on. Although I would say as a heads up, there is a slight modification which uh, I basically built one of these from a bit of scrap metal. And what this does is this just helps the machine get up to that little bit of extra temperature by basically stopping drafts getting in from the side. So we're going to get into that, but either way, it's kind of nice that it works. Here it goes. We cut around the milk bottle. The top bit here is obviously not going to fold out. It's going to leave like a little bubble. All I'm going to do is basically use a heat gun just to bring a little bit of heat around here and just stretch it out slightly flatter. Obviously be careful, it is hot. There we go. And obviously the same on the underside. Okay, so you can appreciate that's not exactly super flat, but it's a lot flatter than it started out, so it's good to go. We've got the edges just trimmed down a little bit and then this platen fixes over the top and you're going to clamp it in. Okay, so we've got it in now and you can see it's just sitting nicely. Uh, the key thing is to make sure it's not getting too close to the heating element up here. So in many ways, this is kind of the interesting bit is that as it is, this machine isn't quite hot enough to get a really good uniform heat on HDPE, just because it's a bit that bit hotter, I think somewhere around 130 off the top of my head, but don't quote me on that. But either way, it's got a very necessary fan coming out the side. Now, although this is perfectly reasonable when uh, melting lower temperature things like PET, what you'll find is that this will also be in training air uh, through this platen, so essentially cooling it down. So the reason I made this little shroud is that I'm going to stick that in here and what that's going to do is essentially stop the air coming in and I found from a few experiments that that basically just takes it up to that little bit extra temperature and gets the job done. So just dropping the platen down now and it allows us to put this on before raising it back up. So as you can see we've got the heat shield that is allowing the temperature to get much higher and it's getting pretty close, as you can see, to being just perfect to mold. And what's interesting is actually a lot of the little sort of kinks and bumps have kind of naturally just evened themselves out. So I'd say we're about ready and uh, try and mold this. All right, here goes. So not bad for a first try. As you can see, there's a little bit of uh, air escaping and round sides, which is why this isn't a perfect fit. So I maybe need to just to be a little bit more generous cutting it out. 
we've got a reasonably good mold and as you can see that's pretty tight around the bottom of the mold. So I'm really pleased with this. We've taken a standard milk bottle, used one of these lovely form box uh, vac formers and essentially got a load of chocolate molds for my kid. Um, Obviously this isn't something that I'd say is an immediate substitute from using the really, really high precision, uh, you know, virgin material sheets if you're doing a specialist project. But I think this is more than adequate for essentially rough prototyping and certainly a lot of those things like you see uh, concrete molds and all sorts of things like plaster of Paris where the precision really doesn't have to be quite the same. So um, yeah, I think this is a really fun alternative at a fraction of the cost with a little bit of effort of course. So as is often the way, started off with milk bottles as the inspiration while making a cup of tea and then I found this in the street which is deionized water canister, um, also HDP and uh, basically a hell of a lot easier shape to unwrap and heat gun a little bit into shape so it's turning out to look like a really good sheet as you can see here. So let's give it a go. And I gotta say, good God, that looks good. Look at that, no webbing, no nothing, and a really nice thickness of plastic. Cause this is probably about three times the thickness of milk bottles. Obviously a lot more sturdy, but the, the mold quality, I mean, I think that's as good as buying premium sheet HDP. That's just really, I wouldn't expect that to be better.